Are you Veritas certified? Veritas certification is an industry recognized program that validates that you have the knowledge and skills to deploy, manage, and administer Veritas products and solutions. If you are an IT professional responsible for information availability, backup, and recovery, email storage and archiving, or other aspects of information governance, Veritas certification is for you. Becoming Veritas certified distinguishes you from your peers by showing your current and future employers that you are serious about applied learning and that you have experience in administering Veritas products. In today's competitive job market, where many IT professionals have the same well-known certifications, having a specialized credential like the Veritas Certified Specialist can set you apart from the field, opening the doors to new opportunities in your industry. Over the next few minutes, we'll show you how to prepare for the Backup Exec 15 certification exam. You can find everything you need to know about this exam at go.veritas.com slash certification. Click Exam List and navigate to Backup Exec 15. This page provides specific information about the exam such as the number of questions, the passing score, and so on. In addition, this is where you will find the exam objectives, the sample exam, and other preparation information. To prepare for the exam, start by downloading and reviewing the exam objectives. This will provide you with an overview of the scope of the exam and the topics tested. This exam tests your knowledge and familiarity with a variety of components and features of Backup Exec 15. The Architecture, Installation and Concept section covers Backup Exec components, architecture and installation. The Managing Devices, Media and Backup Exec Servers section covers configuration and management of devices, drivers, storage pools, and backup sets, including media rotation and data lifecycle management. You are also tested on catalog implementation and data encryption, including the database encryption key. The Protecting Data section covers the features Backup Exec provides for protecting multiple servers and protecting computers using simplified disaster recovery. The Restoring Data section covers the methods and options available to restore data from backups. This includes media catalogs, simplified disaster recovery, and traditional backups. The Maintenance Task section covers monitoring, basic troubleshooting, performance tuning, and database management. Finally, the Backup Exec Agents and Advanced User Options section covers NDMP, deduplication options, and the Backup Exec CLI. It covers using agents and options, including database and virtualization agents. It also covers GRT and ESO. Once you are familiar with the scope of the exam, you should sign up for the recommended training classes. Veritas Certification Path Diagrams provide guidance on which courses to take. These diagrams are available on the Education website. In the description below this video, a complete list of website links is provided for your reference. After you attend the recommended training, use the exam study guide to prepare for the exam. The study guide lists recommended training and product documentation to review and provides examples of hands-on tasks you should be able to perform. The study guide also outlines specific lessons and topics from the training that you should study to meet each exam objective. Gaining hands-on experience with the product is also important. The exam study guide provides a list of common tasks that you should be able to perform in your environment. Veritas recommends that you have three to six months of experience working with Backup Exec before taking the exam. If you are already certified on an older version of Backup Exec, such as Backup Exec 2012, you need to focus your study on new features introduced in later versions of the product. For example, 
Backup Exec 2014 introduced questions on mixed backup jobs and managing multi-server backup jobs, as well as questions on the agent for Windows or Linux. It also required in-depth knowledge of GRT-enabled backups. Backup Exec 15 introduced new functionality in the database encryption key, interpretation of enhanced DLM logs, and Backup Exec Capacity Editions. The next step in preparing is to practice your exam taking skills using the downloadable sample exam. The sample exam provides 20 questions that represent what you can expect to see on the exam. Set aside 20 minutes, clear your desk, and time yourself taking the sample exam. You should average one minute per exam question. In the actual exam, you will be asked to answer 80 to 90 questions in 120 minutes. Some exam items test your knowledge of product features and functionality. Other items are scenario based and test your ability to apply the backup exec solution to meet a need or solve a problem in a real world environment. Let's look at a few items from the Backup Exec 15 sample exam and I'll explain the type of knowledge required to answer the items correctly. Which type of storage destination is managed through media set rotation? The correct answer to the question is B. B is correct because tape storage is governed by media set rotation. A is incorrect because the backup sets on disk cartridge media are kept for the amount of time that is specified in the backup job properties. Disk storage devices are governed by data lifecycle management, not the media sets. C and D are incorrect because cloud storage and deduplication storage are both disk-based storage that is managed by data lifecycle management. Next question. Which encryption type is enabled when the Use FIPS 140-2 compliant software encryption option is selected? In this question, C is correct. Backup Exec only supports the 128-bit and 256-bit advanced encryption standard. Therefore, A and D are incorrect. However, FIPS 140-2 compliant software encryption requires 256-bit encryption. Therefore, B is also incorrect and C is correct. Next question. An Active Directory domain includes six domain controllers. One of the domain controllers crashes due to a power surge. Which backup exec method should the administrator use to recover the failed domain controller without affecting the other domain controllers? In this example, C is the correct answer. Authoritative and non-authoritative restores are the only two methods that can be used to restore an Active Directory environment. The non-authoritative method is used when there is a hardware failure and the data on the other domain controllers is good. A is incorrect because an authoritative restore is used when there is data corruption and all data on the domain controllers is affected. This method restores the domain controller directory to the state that it was in when the backup was made then overwrites all the other domain controllers to match the restored domain controller, thereby removing any changes made since the backup. B is incorrect because the backup exec GRT is not supported for read-only domain controllers. It is not a valid Active Directory restore method. D is incorrect because the ntdsutil command is used to perform an authoritative restore which would affect the data on the other domain controllers. Now here is the last question. Which two methods should an administrator use to prevent inadvertent overwrite of media in a standalone tape drive after a job? In this example, B and C are the correct answers. B is correct because a media set with the protect the media from being overwritten property enabled can prevent an inadvertent overwrite. 
C is correct because if the media is ejected after the job completes, the next backup job will not start. It remains in the queue and generates a media alert asking for fresh media. The user then needs to manually remove the ejected media and insert fresh media. A is incorrect because a device pool cannot have an overwrite only scratch media property enabled. D and E are incorrect because choosing to overwrite only expired media or recyclable media before scratch does not ensure the media is not overwritten. Even though the media or backup set may have expired, the user may not want to overwrite it. You now have an idea of the kinds of questions you'll see on the exam. After you've taken the recommended training, gained the hands-on experience, and studied the sample exam, you're ready to register for the real thing. To register for a Veritas certification exam, you need to obtain a Veritas Cert Tracker ID. Select a test center location and follow the registration instructions provided on our website. See the links in the description below to access all the resources referenced in this video. If you have any questions, you may also contact us by email. Congratulations! You are on your way to becoming Veritas certified. Remember, to begin your path to Veritas certification, visit go.veritas.com certification. And best of luck in taking the exam.